Ooh, that one hit. Get that, that fish just stopped. Those reels, boom. Check out that smallmouth bass. That's a beautiful fish. small one. Oh, look at that thing. Like that one. <laughs> this is just unbelievable. The Ontario experience is the next best thing to going on the adventure yourself. And who knows, this unique show just might give you some ideas for your next fishing or hunting trip. The lodges and resorts in Ontario are waiting to welcome you back once we can travel again safely. So stay tuned after watching this episode. It's almost as good as being there. Right, well, we got everything put away, uh, got everything in the cabin here, which is fantastic. All the cabins here, first class. Met with Barry, who operates Camp Quetico, and uh, he kind of gave us a little bit of a game plan in the next few days. We're going to do a Portage Lake tomorrow. Very excited about that. We're going to find out a little bit more at dinner tonight. Right now, it's time to eat. So we just left Camp Quetico. We drove here, uh, mm -hmm. follow, followed you out here to this uh, kind of unique location. It's a pretty cool <laughs> drive through the woods, especially with the with the fall colors here in the Ontario wilderness. It's just beautiful. So what do we have planned today? Well, we're going to go out here on the floodwaters. This is what we call Reserve Bay Landing. Uh, one of the accesses to it. It's a, it's a big chain of water back in here. But now yeah, we're going to try a little bit of bass fishing today, uh, a little bit of walleye fishing. So yeah, it's just, it's like I said, there's a little bit of everything in this yeah. lake. So uh, it's just what you want to fish for really is what it comes down to. Smallmouth bass happen to be my favorite fish to catch. It looks like we're well, in the then, right place. Well, that's what we'll try and see if we can yeah, find some of them today. <laughs> Oh, he's a fighter. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks he's bigger than he really is. <laughs> nice one. I get him get hold of him here. <laughs> Come here then for a minute. There we go. I'm trying to get him by the lip, but he wouldn't wasn't cooperating. There's one of your little small mouth bass. That, that's a good one. Big, yeah, nice chunky, nice chunky smallmouth. Oh, look at that thing. Yeah, that I is a beauty black flip. fish. I don't think Want I'm going to grab that flip this one. Uh, <laughs> this smallmouth has a big, oh, look at this, how fat. That's a this beautiful fish. smallmouth. Oh, look at that thing. Like that one. <laughs> that's why you come up to Camp Quetico. Getting a little VMC swim bait. And sorry, I accidentally stepped on the, okay. the pedal <laughs> and turned it. What a beautiful dark smallmouth. That's the water color. That's right. This it, fish it, kind of matches this really dark tea stained water color up here. You know, when you, you think about smallmouth fishing, Camp Quetico has some absolute toads. Oh, that one hit. Whoa, that's a big fish. If that's a smallmouth, that's a monster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. I'm going to swing He just this crushed side. that thing. Look at that. I'm not, that's a little bit too big to boat flip. Yeah. <laughs> even, on, even on heavy line. Whew. The 
sun just popped out. <laughs> just throwing the rig around. I just have one hook on here. That it, they find the right one to, <laughs> to hit. But look at that. Look at that. That fish just stopped. Those reels just boom to stop the bait. How beautiful these fish are here. Just incredible. This really dark kind of golden brown in the Stanic Wad. This is just unbelievable. Let me get this fish back in. Man, smallmouth bass are my absolute favorite fish to catch, no question about it. And here at Camp Coetico, you know, we, fishing today and what we've seen, we're just scratching the surface on the options here for different lakes and different species that you can target. Yeah, that's one thing about being here. I mean, you know, we're only seeing a little bit of this lake. I mean, we've put in at Reserve Bay Landing. We haven't went very far, very hardly a couple miles from where we actually put in. And this lake, you could boat 26 miles to the other end, to the clear side if you wanted, which this is the darker side, what they call the upper, the other side being the lower. And it's the clarity of the water is a lot clearer down there. You can see more here. This is uh, the stained end of the lake where the water flows in, uh, you know, the river system comes in. Um, it's just such a vast body of water. Been on it for years and uh, I still don't even know it all. I mean, there's just so much to see. You know, you, you, I think you could spend your lifetime trying to see it all. There's just so many back bays and little fingers here or there that you could spend a lot of time to uh, just address it and just see something new every day if you really wanted to. That's the neat part about it. That's a big one. Uh, yeah. I'm getting out of the way. Oh, look at oh, that look tank. Oh, look at this thing. Yes, yes, Look yes. at that tank. <laughs> that thing can't even jump out of the water. I'm going to bring it to this side. Oh, man, that, that's a beast. Another one. Come here, come here, come here. Open up one more time. Gotcha. All right. Oh, Woo. nice fish, Troy. Look at that beauty. Out. Look at how much, how they flare. <laughs> so cool when they flare with their kills like this. You, you know, we're, we're right at the dinner table with people from Indiana, you know, in, in the Midwest, and they have a lot of good smallmouth fishing around there. But there's a reason when you have people that live around good smallmouth waters come up to Camp Quetico to get great smallmouth fishing. The clear water probably holds more fish. If you wanted to come up and catch more numbers, would probably be the side that you would fish. You're looking for the toads, the bigger ones. You're not gonna catch as many numbers up here, probably on the dark stained water side, but when you do find them, they are generally the fish of the lifetime, one that you, know, you may never ever repeat. And even as, as a guide, a lot of times you keep thinking, man, they just can't be any bigger than this. And you can fish for a long time and you can't find one any bigger than this because there is records. Uh, every year generally gets broke in the Bass Classic of that one big one that is a little bit bigger. So of course you keep looking for it and you keep trying. Not the numbers, but there's always a bigger one there somewhere if you keep trying. Oh, nice. I hear some drag. We hear some drag. I just hope I got a good enough set on that because I wasn't really ready again. Coming up. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I got a net if, <laughs> if you want me to scoop it. Yeah, you know what? Because this rod's a little long. If you want to even just grab it for me, it'll be good. It's whatever you want to do. I there, can't we'll quite get bent down. There, yeah. All right. <laughs> ah. There we go. Come here, fella. <sighs> Now, I don't know what you say, but that is just plain fun. <laughs> you gotta love it when you hook into those. I mean, you know, that's a good heavy rod, everything else. And I mean, it, it just smacked me. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know what? They've always said as a kid growing up, fishing's supposed to be fun. And how much more fun than that is to come to Camp Quitico and catch some bass like these ones. They're out there, folks. Come and get them. You know, I've spent a great deal of time exploring the various regions of Ontario. 
Sunset Country, the Superior Region, and Algoma. But my experience in Northeastern Ontario has been much less. So when I was given the opportunity to drive the scenic route to Green Wilderness Lodge in the Gogamma region of Northeastern Ontario, I couldn't have been more excited to see what I heard was just an outstanding walleye and pike fishery with the chance it's a big smallmouth too. And also the great things I heard about the comfort and surroundings of Green Wilderness Lodge. And my adrenaline was racing. Of course, besides getting settled in and talking with host Russell and Linda, I couldn't wait to explore Lake Matagami. All the customer fish photos on their website, greenwilderness.com, had certainly got me excited. The views from the cabins of the lake are simply stunning. And as far as the accommodations, Green Wilderness Lodge offers all the amenities of home and then so. Of course, then there's the food, which is simply top notch and is sure to keep you fueled to catch fish. But one thing's for certain, nobody goes away hungry. Well, my wife and I have been coming up to the Green Wilderness Lodge since 1984. My parents found it and uh, they sent us uh, a message to come up here and, and we've been coming ever since. So it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. We got married the year after that. And, it's a, it's a fun place to, to come visit. Endless things to do, ATVing, fishing, hunting, uh, just en enjoying the, the Ontario North. That's a good fish. Nice. It's probably a pike. So this is a big smallmouth bass. I thought it was a pike at first. And I just kind of, you know, you get in these areas here. And it's just fun. I mean, here's coming up to jump way out there. And there are smallmouth in here. Uh, so, and occasionally, see if that, I just threw up shallow on the island here. We, um, we're going for walleye around here, but I can't help but throw up shallow for smallmouth. And what I got here is a Green Wilderness Lodge toad. This is one of the bigger ones I've gotten in a long time. This nice. We caught pike today. We caught tons of walleye. Well, here she comes. She's coming up. And this is actually the exact same rig. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. This is the same rig I've been throwing for the walleye. So you get up shallow on the rocks, certain parts of the lake, you can throw up shallow and try to get a, you know, try to get a, you know, primarily for the walleye, obviously, but there is the chance that you have at getting a nice smallmouth bass as well. All right, the red. Including, give me the rod, give me the rod. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Need a chest in case you. Oops, I almost got her. I feel like this is in a tournament. There. Oh, she's big. That's one thing. Smallmouth got a lot of fight in them. And they do not give up easy. They do not give up easy. Oops. Got her. Oh, there. Check out that smallmouth bass. Like I said, that's a Green Wilderness Lodge toad. We've got a bunch of walleye. We got into some pike as well. You know what? You come up here for the walleye. That's the main thing. But this is the same. You see this little swim bait here? It's the same thing I've been throwing for some of the some of the walleye. There's a lot of great structure here. You know, if you are interested in the middle of the day, if the walleye slows down, you can throw up shallow for some pike, throw up shallow for some walleye. But this definitely is the icing on the cake for the trip here to Green Wilderness Lodge.
Where do we do? Where do I? Well, we're gonna Lace put them right rods. up here. <clears throat> See those tubes here? Yeah. I'll oh, throw perfect. them in there. Okay. Okay, perfect. So we probably don't want to go too far. Yeah. How long is the drive through the? It's about an hour's ride. Okay. All right, and it's a nice uh, medium type ride. So the train's okay. Uh -huh. and you get a little roughness here and yeah. there, but it's mostly good to go and easy, okay. easy type ride. And we'll take it right to the lake. Yeah. And we'll load up the boats and and we'll go fishing. That was fun. You like that ride? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's worth the trip right there. <laughs> yeah, right? it is. <laughs> the, the, the ride is that's kind of the the appetizer. And then we have the lake is kind of the main course, and the ride back will be dessert. Exactly. <laughs> it's a three like course that. meal. I like that. I like how that goes. All That's right, good. let's get fishing. Should be a fish on that log. If I was a smallmouth, worth anything. Pull it right there. If I was a smallmouth, I would live <laughs> right on that log. You have a smallmouth. <laughs> that was. Nice one. There we go. Nice one. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way the smallmouth thinks. Yeah, that's a better one. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, yeah. There we go. They got a good captain. All right, let's get her back and grow bigger. Oh. Snuck one in on There you, you go. Nice fish. I love the fight. Yeah. <laughs> they are fun. Then they come up. Ah, <laughs> dance for you. Very nice. They're tight to the shore. Yeah. Tight, 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 tight. See, I'm thinking right up yeah. here. I'm going to get another one. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. This is awesome. This was just. Thank you. <laughs> hey, my pleasure. <laughs> This is a blast. My pleasure. Oh. I like it when it turns into a good day. Yeah. That was a good action. You see that that big boulder up there is kind of breaking the current. And that's, I've had two fish right out of there, right in between. And that's great when you're fishing rivers or you're fishing something like this, looking for that little bit of sheltered water that those fish can kind of sit in without fighting the current. And the food is going to come right to them like that, just like that. So they wait for something to come by. There. Case in point. <laughs> Perfect. And the other nice thing is spots like this reload. You can just sit here and nice little smallmouth. You can just fish. You know, you spend a lot of time catch a lot of fish because new fish, this is a little guy. He's eating good. Perfect. I love it. <laughs> Run down to the Narrows. I spoke with Big Al, who's been a guide out here for a lot of years. And he recommended some areas that uh, I go try. So we're doing kind of an excursion here on the lower lake here for some mainly smallmouth, number one. And then if we can get into some walleye and possibly maybe a big pike. So I'm kind of rigged up for both. But Big Al gave me some intel. Just looking ahead, I see some boulders up here, a little bit flatter. The, the, the main river channel is running right through here. So you have current in here, you got boulders, you're gonna have fish. There's a either a rock or a piece of wood right there. This is gonna be the sunny side. Early season, those rocks are gonna warm up. I'm actually just gonna pull over here and kind of fish my way down. My guess is I'm gonna get bit right here. There are some spots that just look fishy. We call them high probability spots. Well, I felt so good about this spot that I had our cameraman and producer, John, send up the drone. What you're about to see is pretty awesome. Look closely and you can actually see the bass emerge out of nowhere to hit the bait. Anytime you have a point like this with rocks and shallow to deep transitions is really a fish magnet and a great place to fish an X-Wrap or hair jig, which is my one-two punch. If the bass follows the X-Wrap but doesn't commit, I'll toss the black hair jig out right away and turn the sniffer into a biter. In these lakes like this, there's no need to, you don't really have to slow down. You can just 
cover water. Smallmouth are just aggressive in nature. So, wonder if there's a rock, if there's a boulder, a piece of wood, you, it's like one cast, basically. There we go. This is why you want to come up here to Algoma country here in Canada at Waterfalls Lodge. Big fish like this in absolute stunning surroundings. I'm thinking that current break right there. There, that's a big fish. Who am I kidding? Just had to take a couple more casts before driving back to Minnesota. Waterfalls Lodge has some great shore fishing too. What? Look at that one. <laughs> right in front of the old sawmill gear. Look at that. Just remember, the fish will be waiting for you in Ontario when we're able to travel again safely.